Hello everyone and welcome to episode 12 of my World of Warcraft Let's Play. Today we are picking up right where we left off in the last episode where we are currently in the Dead Mines and this is part 2 of my 2 part Dead Mines episode. So let's go ahead and just jump straight into things. So here there was a patrol coming up behind us while we were taking a short break. So I'm freaking out a little bit here. But we can go ahead and just deal with these taskmasters. It looks like everyone's back. So there's been constantly patrols kind of coming in backstabbing us as we go through this dungeon. But we have been dealing with them pretty easily and this one almost got the better of us. The druid almost died here, but we survived. The druid is a really good tank, really good at healing with themselves when needed. So that is good. I was drinking water, I'll go ahead and try to catch up to the group here and just jump down here a little bit come through this gate with them. So here we have another door here that kind of leads into the next part of the mines and we can see here it is a continuation of the concept of the dead mines and we just have a ton of mines and more paths here, caverns, tunnels that we are working our way through. On the shadow gem I'll go ahead and just pass on that and a red device mask. I'm going to go ahead and delete both of the masks that I have in my inventory and I'm just going to take a moment to kind of pop off on my mana a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and conjure another thing of water so that I can drink when needed and can deal with these strip mines. This taskmaster, very, oh he's running away, very rude, kind of just came up behind me and attacked me and I was too close to it. So that's a little embarrassing but it's pretty easy to deal with. But we did pull a strip miner. Strip miner is very easy to fight. And he's running away again. And he pulled another strip miner. It's just getting all the miners in to help out in this fight. But this should be pretty easy to deal with. We are coming up to uh, near the end of this next area and also the end of the entire dungeon. So we can... I'm just gonna pass on that and I'll just greet on that. If, it's, if we get it, it'll be a little bit of good gold. Shadow gem, not too much value from picking that up. Uh, I'm just going to take this moment to drink some water while we, they fight these strip miners and we can continue our way through this dungeon. So we have a big group of strip miners here but they're all easy to deal with and we have some AoE stuff going on as well. As a mage I have a ton of AoE however I have not learned it at all because I have been mostly focused in the open world and I've been mostly focused on just attacking mobs individually instead of trying to AoE them down. So it might be worthwhile for me to go ahead and pick up some AOE abilities at some point, but currently I do not have them. But here we have this next part of the Dead Mines, and this is a very, very exciting part. So here we have this Defias Gunpowder. So we can go ahead, I believe someone already did, pick up um, some gunpowder, and we have over here this Defias Cannon. So we can put the gunpowder, it says requires Defias Gunpowder, into the cannon and it'll launch the cannon and it is directly targeting that ironclad door you can see right there that is locked. So it's going to break down the door and you can see what's on the other side of this heavily locked door. We have Strike Miner, go ahead and finish them off, I got Feeling Clap. So our tank is getting the Defias Gunpowder and once she picks it up she'll head over to the cannon and then we can see what lies ahead of us. So we just blasted the door and we can kind of see it's opening up. We see a Defias Pirate and a Squall Shaper and then we had an individual named Mr. Smite yell, you there, check out that noise. My auction for that leggings on the pot. The auctions that I put up that did not sell are now expiring which is a little unfortunate. And then Mr. Smite yelled, we're under attack, Avastia swabs repel the invaders, you could hear him screaming out. So this is a very special area because, or like dungeons in general are very special because like the bosses will oftentimes speak using like their voice, which is very unique compared to a lot of other areas in the dungeon. So we just had a friend level up, we can go ahead and congratulate them. And then once we come through this door, we can kind of see what is going on over here. So we have pirates over here, which is very interesting. We have not seen Defias pirates yet, 
So this is like a very new type of enemy that we're not seeing anywhere, anything like this at all so far in the series. And they're pirates that are working in the device, so this is very interesting. Let me just restore mana real quick. We have the group kind of charging forward, and I'll go ahead and go forward, and we can see what is through here. So here we have a giant dreadnought ship here that seems to be kind of what the Defias have been building. So we have a ton of mobs here, let's go ahead and deal with them. And you can also see on the other side here there is a giant gate here. And it seems like in this cove here in the dead mines, the Defias have been gathering ore and wood and stuff like that in order to build this giant dreadnought. What exactly they want to do with it, we don't know exactly yet, but it seems like this is the what they have been constructing, what they have been working towards, as this is definitely very interesting and very big. We can see there are a lot of cannons on it. And let's go ahead and attack this pirate. And I ran out of mana, so I can go ahead and just melee a little bit. But from what we have done so far in this entire series, where we started off near Northshire Abbey, where we saw kobolds in the mine and device in the vineyards, and the kobolds were like a gathering ore from the mines, and then we continued further into Elwyn Forest, and we have seen all the kobolds around there and all the defias doing various things there, and then we go into Westfall and Redridge, and we see stories of the own that we have seen. Everything that we have seen of kobolds and gnolls and we have seen some goblins here and there and the device everywhere has been building up to here to this moment and this is the finale of what we can see with the device and what everything they have been working on here they have devoted all of their manpower all of their resources everything that they have and they have put it here into this dreadnought so let's go on board we have these like docks here on the side that we're just going to continue forward. I want to go loot this real quick because maybe it has something and I just have to loot everything, you know? A silver 35 copper, that's nice. Go ahead and run over here. I'm just going to run part way. And then I will go ahead and drink some water. I'm now recounting bosses and there are seven bosses in the dungeon so we have fought three bosses so far coming into the area this area and this is the final area of the dungeon and there are four bosses on this ship so it's very boss dense so we are going to go ahead and work our way up and fight all of these bosses so here we have mr smite the ship's first mate so this is the boss that kind of screamed at us earlier and we are going to go ahead and fight this black guard. And we, then we'll fight the other black guard, and then we will fight Mr. Smite. So let's go ahead and deal with these adds right away. The adds are pretty tanky, and Mr. Smite is also tanky. And Mr. Smite has kind of a very special mechanic that we will see in a moment. So let's go ahead and fight this black guard. Almost got it down. And now we can start targeting Mr. Smite. So here, Mr. Smite is kind of just attacking us, and currently he is using a one-handed sword there as a very cool looking sword. Also, this is a Tauren, so it's a Tauren that is a member of like the Horde, that, that race of people, though it's a, kind of complicated and we'll learn more about the Tauren in the future, but they're like cow people. And there's one here, working with the Defias here on this ship. You land lovers are tougher than I thought. I'll have to improvise. So he just got to 66% health, so now he's phasing. So this is the boss that has phases. So he is now uh, getting rid of his sword, and he now has two axes. So he is just going to start attacking much faster now, and you're just going to have to get him down to 33-ish percent health, and then he'll phase again, I think. He's at like 20% right now. And he's heading back to his chest and he's going to drop his axes and he's going to pick up a new weapon and we can see what it is in just a moment. He now has one bigger axe. I thought he was supposed to have like a big hammer, I'm not entirely sure. But he has this axe and he's just going to attack us with it. And he now has a hammer that he dropped. I'm going to go ahead and pass on it. And I am going to drink some water. 
So that is one more boss down, and now we can head on to the Dreadnought here in Ironclad Cove. As this big gate, uh, if you kind of figure out the map a little bit here, we can kind of tell that it's kind of over here-ish, potentially, uh, with where we've gone in Dead Mines. And in a future episode, we will actually see the other side of this gate. So that is something to look forward to, but it's very large and very, very cool in my opinion. And this entire area is really cool with this dreadnought and like all the pirates on the ship and we're gonna go ahead and jump on now. I am not entirely sure how long this episode is gonna be if I'm completely honest. So this might actually be a two part episode. If you're watching this, you're probably in the second part right now. So, welcome. Uh, and that's gonna be really exciting because this dungeon is definitely a long time and we're gonna be spending a lot of time here in the dead mines, but we are almost done. And I'm just gonna say grats. And I'm also about to level up myself. Three people have leveled up so far in this dungeon. And potentially I am next because I am just two bars away. A little bit more than two bars. Now let's continue forward on this bridge here and into the dungeon. And I just realized I'm still in the looking for a group chat so I can go ahead and leave that chat so I don't get messages from it because I don't want it because I'm not actively looking for a dungeon right now. And then I can continue past the crossbows of these friends and I am now two bars away from leveling up. So very exciting. I'm probably going to level up on this ship which is really cool. I, I just kind of like, I like that. I like that idea. And we have a couple pirates and a ship builder here. So more goblins that are around here that are working on building this ship. There's a box of sword parts down there, which I think has engineering supplies in it. So if you were to go grab that, you would be able to get some supplies from there. This pirate is almost dead, and then we can move over to this pirate, but I am running low on mana, so I can go ahead and just melee. And then once we are out of combat, I can go ahead and restore my mana. Cast a couple of frost bolts. My man is restored. Let's go ahead and help out with this group of enemies. And we're just heading up the ship here. We have gone up like one level of the deck, and now we are able to go up a second level that we can see here. Ship builder is almost dead, and we can help finish off this pirate as well. Okay, nothing in the loot there. I'm gonna go ahead and just drink for a moment while they walk up and then I'll follow them. So then join up. Um, looks like we're fighting this pirate right here. So we have four enemies here. Go ahead and focus this pirate first. We're a bar and a half away from leveling up, which is really cool. And fight the pirate. I think this is oh he's attacking me now, which is a little concerning. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and force him just trying to kill him. And fire blast and finished. Let's go ahead and fight the shipbuilder. And then head over to the squaw shaper. And then we can fight the squaw shaper and then this pirate is the last thing after. So go ahead and save up a little bit of mana to fight this pirate. One more tick and then I'll go ahead and cast crossbow a couple of times and finish it off. I'll go ahead and leave that. I think I'm going to go ahead and clear my inventory a little bit here. So I think I'm going to get rid of these oven mitts that I upgraded. And then I'll go ahead and get rid of these bracers as well. And then I think I'll probably go ahead and delete this stone perhaps. I think someone needed it. Uh, I'll save it and ask later. So let's go ahead and run up here. And there's a chest there, but I'm going to tight on inventory space. And then I think I could just delete the health stone if I need one more space. some milk there so I'll go ahead and delete that. I won these pants. I've got a lot of loot but not too much useful stuff because I've just been greeting on everything. And I'll go ahead and I think I 
I kind of want to hold on to everything I have in my inventory right now. But if I absolutely need it, I'll probably delete these movies next. But I think they sell for a decent amount. So I would rather. Decent amount being like two cents. So not that great, but whatever. So we can fight this pirate, and the shipbuilder is about to go down as well. Let's go ahead and target the shipbuilder now. And we are almost at the end of this dungeon. We are almost at the top of the ship here, which is super exciting. We'll go ahead and help fight all of these people over here. And you can kind of see our next boss there. So Captain Greenskin. So there's a goblin captain on this sh ship. Let's go ahead and melee the shipbuilder. I'm running a little low on mana. Looks like we're backing up a little bit. And then we can fight this. Uh, the shipbuilder kind of ran away a little bit, so hopefully he doesn't pull anything. I don't think there's anything over the right potential. So I'm gonna finish the shipbuilder and then we'll attack the squaw shaper. I think the squaw shaper summon birds, or it's a pirate that summon birds, one of them. Maybe both, I'm not sure. But the birds are not too big of an issue. They're definitely not like the hardest golems from earlier on in the dungeon. And I am almost half a bar away from leveling up, so I'm getting really excited for that. Finish this pirate off, and then I'll go ahead and just drink some water here. So here we are, we're almost at the very top of the ship here. We saw that captain wandering around, so we can go ahead and wait for that captain to come nearby, and we can go ahead and fight him. I believe this captain has loot that would be pretty good for us, so I'm kind of excited for that. Though we do have the staff of Westfall um, that we can get at the end of this dungeon, which is significantly better than the staff that we have from the Mage's quest from a long time ago. So I'm not sure which one we're going to fight first, probably the Squash Shaper if I'm going to guess, so I'll start casting Frostbolts at it. And then we can fight the pirate, and then we can turn our attention over to the captain, which is level 20. Which we are not too far away from, but it's definitely a little bit higher level than S and deal with this pirate friend here and then all that's left is captain greenskin and we'll see what loot he has for us hopefully something good that we can grab if we need it uh, let's go ahead and keep fighting captain greenskin here and he's at half health i don't think he does too much just a little bit of a tough boss and go ahead and just melee and then i can cast some frost bullets and emily and it's almost dead and dead so this is a very nice staff however i don't uh think i need it because we are going to get the staff of westfall which actually i think i'll go ahead and just greed so that our warlock friend can have it and then I will get the new staff from the quest. It is pretty nice looking though, so it's a good looking, good looking staff. And we are very close to leveling up. We might level up when we kill Van Cleef, which would be really cool. But he does have two adds with him, so we might level up on him. So we are just buffing up, we are kind of healing a little bit, and then we will go ahead and Edwin Van Cleef who is the leader of the Defias. He is the Defias Kingpin and he is who we have been waiting 11 episodes to fight. We have been learning the story and the world of Azeroth and everything that has been going on with humans. We have learned about the Stonemasons Guild and who they are and what faction they are and how they were screwed over. And we have learned how they have turned into the Defias, where they have plundered the lands of the Kingdom of Stormwind, where they have terrorized the civilians and the farmers and the guards of Stormwind. They have stolen resources from mines and from farms and from lumber mills. And they have put it all here into the dead mines, into this ship that they have constructed. And this has all been led by Edwin Van Cleef. And it's now time that his reign of terror in the lands of Stormwind and that his injustice that he has been inflicting upon the people of Stormwind comes to a true end here as we fight him. A very cool looking boss, very cool looking armor, and a very, very cool character that we are about to say goodbye to in the series. And he just spawned two more ads. 
and I'm running very low on mana here. So I think we're just going to DPS Ebony Van Cleef down and then the adds will despawn. So we can go ahead and cast a couple of Frost Bolts on them. We should be pretty good here. Our healer has a lot of mana. Let's go ahead and cast another Frost Bolt in a moment. I'll go ahead and do it now because I have a second one coming out. He has very cool dialogue that's been going on. And we killed him and we have leveled up. So let's cast a ton of Frost Bolts on these Black Guards. And then let's fight this other Black Guard. Cast another Frost Bolt over here. And we have killed Edwin Van Cleef, the Defias Kingpin. And this is a very good chess piece, so I might actually go ahead and knee on that. And then I will go ahead and loot him, and then I'll go ahead and delete this cloak, I think. Or no, I will do that. And then do this. And I'll loot all of this. Well, um, I don't need that. So I just won, <laughs> barely won this shirt here. So I'll go ahead and delete these gloves. I can go ahead and equip this shirt, which is significantly better than what I had equipped from the robes from a couple episodes earlier. And then, um, we're gonna fight this final boss here, which is a bonus boss. And I can go ahead and just come down here. I got everything I needed, I think. So I got Edwin Van Cleef's head. And I got a quest item from him. So let's go ahead and we'll just fight this group of enemies here. And then I will just double check that I have everything. So let's go ahead and go in here. So this is complete. I have all the Red Soak bandanas. I have all the Miner's Union card. I have Thistle Nettles badge. I have this Underground Assault completed where I got the Gnome Speckle Sprocket. And then I got Head of Van Cleef. And now I have this quest here, which I will pick up in a moment. And Cookie's Tinderizer, really, uh, ooh, does it sound? Okay. Really cool item, looking item, but not necessary for us. So I'm not going to just read on it, but I want it. <laughs> I was the only one that rode for it, so I'll go ahead and delete this mess that I have here. And then I'll run over here, and I'll pick this up. So we got quite a bit of loot from this dungeon, and I have this device pirate that we can finish off here. And that is pretty much the entire dungeon. So that was the last boss, that's kind of a bonus boss, Cookie. He's the ship's cook, he's a morlock. And we can just kind of group up here, double check that everyone has everything. And I can say thank you for the party. And we are about to make our separate ways. I don't have a target. So I'm going to go ahead and run up over here, out of Ironclad Cove. We can see there's another little entrance to a mine here, and we can kind of just walk out here. And this is a back exit to the dead mines. We cannot enter this way, but we can exit this way. So we can go ahead and head through this portal here, exit the dead mines, double checking I have the letter. And we can come out of this bonus exit. This kind of reminds me again of Skyrim where we are kind of, or wait, I said again, but I was referring to my Guild Wars 2 series there. But this reminds me of Skyrim where we're at the end of Bleak Falls Burrow and we're kind of heading out of the cave and we're kind of going down some levels and we come out here in to Westfall. So here we are, the Dagger Hills and Westfall are very, very far away from Sentinel Hill and I could probably just go ahead and Hearthstone and let's go ahead and do that and I'm gonna go ahead and leave the party and we can Hearthstone back to Sentinel Hill and then once we are at Sentinel Hill we see a lighthouse over there we'll go over there at another point of time but we can look at this unsent letter that we have in our inventory and we can also go to a merchant so let's go ahead and read through this Searching Edwin Van Cleef's person, you discover, among other items, an unsend letter. It is addressed to Barros Alexton, the city architect of Stormwind City Hall, Cathedral Square. It appears to be recently written and sealed. Let's go ahead and accept that. And then let's come over towards the merchant, which, uh, let's go ahead and just go to 
the innkeeper real quick and I'm just gonna sell a couple of items so we can kind of Light look through everything we have so I'll just sell this trash and then I think I'll just keep what I have right now oh I must repair it first okay let's go ahead and sell this dwarven hatchet this mace this tenderizer and all of this stuff and let's head up to grind stout mantle and let us tell him about our adventures in the dead mines we have now finished our first ever dungeon in world of warcraft and one of the few dungeons that we are going to be doing in this series so that is super super exciting and we have finished the main quest line of the defias brotherhood and we have solved a lot of the issues in the kingdom of stormwind and we have figured out a lot of the story here well so let us talk to Grian, the defias brotherhood he says, Athos, your bravery is remarkable. The People's Militia thanks you for your service to the people of Westfall. With Van Cleef dead, this marks the beginning of the end for the Defies Brotherhood. Hopefully someday soon, peace will once again grace the plains of this fair land. I salute you, sir. And we have a choice between Tunic of Westfall, uh, these pants, and then this staff. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this staff. Light bless you. And he says, all hail Athos, defender of the people. And we can go ahead and equip this staff, which is a cool, tall staff. Let's go ahead and run up this tower here, Sentinel Tower. And we can go ahead and turn in our other quest over here. So let us run all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. And this is the quest for the Red Suck Bandanas that we had. Let's go ahead and talk to her. And then we can just pick whatever. I'm going to pick the two-handed because I think it's going to be more gold. And we can go ahead and sell this stuff. So we have a few more quests to turn in, but they're all in Stormwind. And none of them are... Oh, we're going to get a wand from this one. So that is super exciting. Go ahead and talk to Lewis. And let's just go through everything we have in our bags real quick. Go ahead and sell that. We can sell that. We can sell that. We can sell that. Kind of want to hold on to these actually. And I'm going to throw them in my bank just for sentimental value. And then I need to find someone that will repair my armor. Um, but everything else I think we are holding on to. Um, so let us head over to Stormwind City. So here we are entering Stormwind again and we can go ahead and run around to a couple of different areas and we can go ahead and turn in all of the quests that we have. So let's go ahead and head over to the Dwarven District to turn in the couple of quests we have there. Here we are in the Dwarven District. Let's hop into this tavern and we can turn in a couple of the quests that we have here to Wild Earth Thistle Nettle who is the brother of the individual that died in the Dead Mines. So we can go ahead and turn this in and then turn in the miners union cards and we can pick i'm just going to pick the boots and let's go ahead and head over to the other spot in the dormant district to turn in this other quest as well and then we can head to the cathedral district so we can talk to burroughs alexton about this letter that van cleef had on his body here is shoni the shylent let's go ahead and talk to you and then we have our first ever wand so that is awesome you can go ahead and equip this and now i can go into general and i can put shoot on my skill bar and now we can use our wand which we will start looking at next episode but for now let's go ahead over to the town hall here we are at city hall let's hop right in and we can talk to burroughs alexton again who we met several episodes ago but let's talk Hello. to him about this letter so he says edwin van cleef you say I would as much expect a letter from my dead grandmother. So you killed him then? Pardon me insane, but I'm somewhat surprised. He was a peerless leader in his younger years. Let's see what he finds the need to write to me about after so many years. Barros pursues the letter. Edwin, I see the years haven't changed you a bit. An idealist as ever, and a romantic. He doesn't care who he hurts, Athos. Revenge has consumed him, but then I'm not sure I can blame him. So, Van Cleef and I were members of the Stonemasons Guild. Our main project was to rebuild Stormwind after the war. When we had finished our duties, we were cheated. The nobles refused to pay us for our work. Some of the more senior of the Stonemasons were offered governmental jobs, but Van Cleef refused it out of loyalty to all the Stonemasons. He led a riot and left the city swearing revenge. His lieutenant, Basil Thread, might know more about Van Cleef's plans. He's being held prisoner in the stockade. 
So let's go ahead and accept this quest. And we now have a quest for another dungeon that we will just go over and we'll check it out real quickly. But we are not going to be doing it this episode or anytime soon. So let's head over to the Stormwind Stockades, which is the next dungeon that I am planning on doing in the series. But as I just said, not for a while. Here we are at the Stockade, level 24 to 32, definitely a very high level compared to what we are at right now. But let's go ahead and talk to Warden Thillwater. So he says, what in the light do you want? Can't you see we have a crisis here? Basil Thread, why would you want to speak with that bastard? How am I supposed to know you're not one of his cronies? Come down to help with this bloody riot. If all the blasted cells weren't open, I might throw you in one for a while. So he says, um, let's get one thing straight, Athos. I don't trust you, but with the situation as it is, you probably won't make a difference. So here's how it's going to go down. Go down there and have your talk with Thread. If you're really on our side, then kill him and bring me his head when the job's done. And if it turns out you're on his side and don't come out when we find you, you'll die along with the rest of the maggots. So let's go ahead and accept this. And this is a quest we will do. A long time from now but let's go ahead I'm just going to do a couple more things in the city and then I think I'm gonna head back to Sentinel Hill and then log out there so let's head into the major's quarter real quick because we got a lot of cloth from doing the dead mines and we can go ahead and just craft a few different things and level up our tailoring a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and buy some coarse thread here and then go down here and I'm gonna make a bunch of bolts of linen cloth I'll come back up here and then find what I was gonna make. So I need eight bolts of linen cloth, so I'll go ahead and do that, and then I will create four linen capes, and then we will be at 75 out of 75 tailoring. Here's the last cape we need to level up to 75, and then I believe something? Uh, we can learn a few things from him, and then if you come over to the artisan trailer, tailor, or I'm not entirely sure, Have a good so one. let's see. So he says, uh, the things we are here to learn are a little over our head. So we want to go to the Larson Cloth Years. So we're not going to stay here. We're going to head over to the Larson Cloth Years, which is over here, I believe. And we can chat with the tailoring trainer that is in there. So let's head straight over there. And then I can check out tailoring. So we learned how to make bolts of woolen cloth, which is really cool. It requires one more cloth than it did with linen. And then we have this expert tailor here. So let's learn journeyman tailor, and then let us uh, craft some of these bolts of woolen cloth. So I just learned a ton of stuff. I got to level 85, and we learned how to make woolen bags. So I'm going to head back over to the merchant down here and buy some fine threads. I can make three woolen bags, and each woolen bag has eight slots. So I can upgrade three of the slots that I currently you have. Go ahead and chat with you, buy three fine threads, and then we can make three bags. And we'll have six more inventory slots than we had previously, which will be very, very nice. See you later. Okay, we have the bags. Let's go ahead and equip them real quick. And we now have so many slots. Looking for something specific. Not quite as much as we'll eventually get one day. So let's go ahead and sell these extra things we have. And then I am going to head over to the bank. Safe and travel. I am going to deposit stuff in there and then I will take a flight path back to Sentinel Hill. So let's head straight over to the bank. Well, first, I actually might make a stop at the auction house real quick. So let's grab what we have from the mail, and then let's poke into the bank real quick as well, just to grab some items. So we can grab some of the items we have here, and then we can take it back over to the auction house maybe, and let's see what we have in the bank as well. And I might sell some of these stacks of cloth that we have because we're done with linen cloth and I don't what think I'm going to use it for anything else really. So let's go ahead and grab that. And then I can put all of my linen stuff uh, into here. I'll take our wool stuff into there. So let's go ahead and organize this a little bit here. And then I just want to deposit these friends into here. And then I can sell that, and I'm going to end up selling that eventually. And let's go ahead and put all these items up here, and then let's see if we are able to go sell them. So let's see how much linen cloth sells for. Not a lot on this server, 
but it's still a decent amount so I can go ahead and just I'll go ahead and put it for eight hours and I'll sell it for this and then this and then I'll see how much a bolt goes for probably not a lot I can go ahead and just sell it for a pound. I'll just put in a number and then tiger's eye yeah we cannot make a lot of money off the auction house on this server Let's check out shadow gym so I might just end up just selling everything that I get and yeah check out spider icker let's go ahead probably not gonna be worth a lot let's go ahead and just do that and then I think next time if none of this sells I'll go ahead and just sell it straight off to a merchant but I might save on to the cloth to use for first aid in the future let's go talk to a weapons hey merchant so I can repair stuff and I'll sell these two items and now let's head back to Sentinel Hill so I am flying into Sentinel Hill right now and I'm gonna go ahead and head to the inn and log off so this was probably a two-part episode and I really appreciate everyone for watching through everything and we completed the deadmines today and we killed Edwin Van Cleef and we turned in a bunch of quests we gained about a level and a half this episode or these last two episodes so that is super cool if you all enjoyed watching this feel free to subscribe to support me in reaching 1,000 subscribers. That's my main goal on YouTube right now, so go ahead and subscribe for that. You could also leave a like and a comment down below, and if you have anything to say about the series, I absolutely love reading through it. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and log off. I hope you all have a great day. Hope you drink some water and check your posture, and I will see you next time in World of Warcraft. Goodbye.